Hey guys, welcome back. Today is the 8th of October 2018. Um, I thought we'd take some time today to revisit a topic that we talked about here on the channel last year, probably about a year or so ago. Uh, as obviously, as you know, we don't just do computer videos here. We also do you know, music-related stuff here. I'm a music lover. Um, have been for many years. And about a year or so ago, we did a video on like some of the most overplayed artists on uh, FM radio. And, um, you know, today I, th I thought we would revisit this topic and also include satellite radio. So it's very interesting. I have a satellite radio subscription with Sirius in my car. And um, what kind of made me think that I was ready to revisit the topic was last week. Uh, now, my stereo in my car, I have a Kenwood stereo aftermarket, of course, and uh, it has the satellite radio, and I also have a USB jack so I can load a flash drive up with a bunch of music, which I have on standby if I can't find anything on satellite radio. Now, that being said, um, I'm finding that I'm plugging that flash drive in a lot as I'm on my way to work at 2.30 in the morning, driving down back roads with a lot of deer. <laughs> Probably not a good time to be putting this the flash drive in, but I usually I try to do that when I'm at a stoplight so I'm not moving and I can pay attention to it. Because there's always at least two to three traffic lights on my commute to work that I catch red on a daily basis, no matter what day of the week it is. So there's plenty of time for that. So anyhow, what I've noticed with the uh, FM radio now, not really, not much has changed. Actually, I was just looking at, uh, now I'm in the South Jersey, Philadelphia metropolitan area, and we have a classic rock station, and we have a uh, classic hits station, which was formerly an oldie station. Um, those of you in my area will know which ones I'm talking about. I'm not going to mention their call letters or anything because we don't need to. You, you'll know which ones they are, and they probably have stations like that in other markets as well. Um, not much has changed uh, other than the station that was formerly an old East station now seems to be stuck in the 1980s. Uh, it's the same tired playlist that they play every single day and they just shuffle it around. Um, you know. And then we also switch to, we have this other station that we play at work sometimes. And, uh, and we have that as a backup at work because all we have is just a little Sony boombox at work. Uh, that's kind of a station you'll hear some stuff from the 90s you'll hear some 90s alternative you'll hear some uh, you know some pop stuff from the set late 70s you hear you know mainly 80s that kind of stuff um, don't want to mention the call letters but it's named if it starts with a letter B and it's a you know a man's name blank FM you know we'll call it that. You know, those of you in my neck of the woods, you'll know which station that is. And what I'm noticing, what in the world is with that song Under Pressure by Queen and David Bowie? I don't care if any one of those three stations plays the hell out of that song. Now, you know, Queen was a good band, you know, the first 10,000 times I heard their songs. Okay. David Bowie at a time was all right. I'm actually I'm at a point where I have the Let's Dance album, and quite frankly, that's all I need. I'm sick and tired of the rest of it. You know, I'm, t I'm tired of his music. He's so overplayed. And I'm thinking to myself, you guys, the, you you radio stations, you did not play this man that much when he was alive. Um, hey, here, here's another issue that I have. Prince, you know, 
talented guy, you know, he knows how to play, you know, how to play guitar and play, you know, multiple instruments. And he, you know, he has talent and he has his fans. I have 1999 and I have the Purple Rain album in my collection. I've had them in my collection for more than 20 years. Um, excuse me. But on two of the three stations I was just talking about, which are FM stations, play him all day long. At least once every two hours. And I'm at work for eight hours. So I notice this. I will hear his song sometimes four or five times a day. Actually, I'm, I'm at work almost nine hours a day because Saturdays is my short day. I work Tuesdays through Saturdays. And Saturdays is my short day, and that's where I hit my 40 hours for the week. But I, I just, it, it amazes me that, you know, I'm at work eight and three quarter hours a day, four days a week, and then like five hours on the fifth day, approximately, or sometimes a little bit more. And I, I again, I never heard Prince this much. I never seen his videos played that much on MTV when he was alive. I never heard his music played on the radio. I don't remember when I was, you know, the, the 90s stuff when I was still in high school, hearing his stuff on the radio. They always had the radio played on a school bus when I was in high school. I never remember hearing his music being played that much. It's like, this guy seems to be more popular now that he's dead. I don't know. I digress. On FM. And... I really didn't think we had an issue here until we got to the point where it was now on Sirius doing the same thing, playing the same artists over and over and over again. I remember I was on my work, my way to work one day, and uh, I just began taking a real liking to Canadian rock music, classic Canadian rock music, um, over the past few years. Now I've always liked Rush. Guess Who, and, you know, Neil Young, you know, some other stuff, Brian Adams, what have you. But I'm talking, you know, more about stuff like, uh, you know, Kim Mitchell, Heartland Brothers, uh, Honeymoon Suite, that kind of stuff. Uh, so I've done, you know, talked about some of their albums on these on these videos before. Um. I was on my way to work one time. This is probably, this is before I turned the Sirius off earlier in the year. And then they were able to get me to come back by offering it for a lower price. And they said, I was on the 80s channel. I said, oh, listen to this rare gem or whatever the hell they call it. And it was the Kim Mitchell song, uh, Go For Soda, which is a good song uh, from 1984. And uh, I Okay, yeah, I'm going to crank this up. It's quarter to three in the morning, but I'm going to crank this up and enjoy myself. I'm just driving down a, you know, a bypass road anyway. Nobody lives on this road. It's just a road to bypass town. So, I'm jamming it out and get done. What's the next song after they play that song other than Open Arms by Journey? You know, and that's another one we're going to talk about. You know, very talented. Steve Perry has a great voice. They're a great band. Okay? But, you know, what about songs like, you know, what, what the hell is it? Uh, feeling That Way or In Any Time? You know? I mean, what about songs like that? They always want to play, uh, excuse me, guys, the camera's acted up. And, uh, so what, what about songs like, uh, like that? You know, they, they, they want to overplay the same songs over and over and over again. And it's almost like they're trying to spoon feed these songs to you and make these songs popular. Yeah, let, let's talk about, you know, while we're on the subject, let's talk about another artist, Bon Jovi. You know Tico Torres, their drummer. You know, those guys are from Jersey, obviously. You know who Tico Torres was with before he joined Bon Jovi's group as a drummer? He was with a group called Frankie and the Knockouts. 
You ought to check their music out. They did a song called Sweetheart in 1981. Uh, he didn't do drums on that one. He did uh, drums on a later album with a song called Outrageous. Uh, I can't, the album title, it's not coming to mind right now, but he was with them like in a short time, like 1983 and 84. You know, but of course, they weren't, they didn't have the commercial success that the Bon Jovi band had. And, you know, it is what it is. And you got Bon Jovi in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And only true diehard fans know about Frankie and the Knockouts. Um, so I'm just thinking to myself, you know, if you guys want to chime in, those of you that listen to classic rock or 80s music or whatever, or classic pop from the 70s and 80s, have you noticed this even on satellite radio now? Um, and what are your thoughts? Uh, I think I'm kind of glad that I had the flash drive and I have just about any song I could ever want anyway. And I can just load up the flash drive with it and we're good to go. And that's, uh, and that's that. Um, so that's, that's just kind of, that, that's kind of my thoughts on that. Um, I really don't listen to the Beatles channel. That was one of the things that got me to come back to uh, Sirius with my subscription was the Beatles channel. Is that, you know, I am not a Beatles collector. There are a lot of people out there with YouTube channels that are Beatles collectors. I like the Beatles music. I don't need 30 copies of Sgt. Pepper. Sorry, guys. I don't need, you know, I, I, I'm not obsessed with the White Album, you know. Yeah, Rubber Soul is my favorite album. I like Please Please Me. I like the early stuff before all that, you know, Paul is Dead and all that other nonsense stuff came out, you know. I liked it when they were a young band because they tried harder and they worked harder to produce stuff. I didn't care for all that psychedelic stuff. It's, you know, kind of went downhill after Sgt. Pepper. But, you know, they, they made up for that with Abbey Road, but then, you know, what happened after that? They were pretty much done because Abbey Road was pretty much the last album they recorded, though Let It Be was actually, you know, any true Beatles fan knows that uh, Abbey Road was pretty much recorded after Let It Be, but wound up being that Let It Be was released after the fact. Um, you know, if you're going to have a Beatles channel, I don't really want to hear Paul McCartney's solo work on that channel. Play him on the 70s channel. Play him on the 80s channel. And as for this new album, you know, I, I don't give a shit about this new Paul McCartney album. I'm sorry. I listened to that Fu You song. You know, what, what are you going to write a song called Fu You for? What's a, what the hell is a 76-year-old man going to write a song like that for? And you listen to it. It's, it's too goddamn modern. I'm sorry. I don't want to hear that crap. And no, I'm not going to go rushing out and get the album because I'm not obsessed with Paul McCartney. You want to know the truth? George Harrison was my favorite Beatle. And you know what? I like Ringo, too, because he can beat the hell out of a set of drums. That's why. So, that George and Ringo are my two favorites. But, obviously, I'm quite disappointed with that Beatles channel, too. I don't need to hear Paul McCartney's solo work. I don't need to be have Paul McCartney spoon-fed to me as a, as a music listener every single day. You know, I, I'm going to resist that. So anyhow, that's my thoughts. That's, that's going to wrap this video up. Uh, you know, post your thoughts if you notice any of the overplaying, even on satellite radio. And uh, you know, what can we do other than uh, load up flash drives or maybe try iHeart Radio or whatever, or up the data plan on my phone and do iHeart Radio, or just bring a flash drive or whatever. <laughs> try that sort of thing. Uh, anyhow, I thank you guys for watching. If you like videos like this, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you on the next one. Have a good one, guys.